Hey there guys and gals, I'm going to go over some cross-sectional anatomy of the abdomen and we have some CT scans and rather than spend a lot of time on each case I'm going to go from one case to another so you see more examples of the same basic things so here we have an unenhanced CT abdomen And what do we have here? The aorta and IVC. Aorta is basically always to the left, the patient's left, of midline. And the IVC is correspondingly on the right. So this is retroperitoneal structure, so you know if you go to the left, you'll see the kidney. Now that can be a little harder to see without IV contrast, but here you see a psoas muscle, and they almost could look a little bit like one another but this is hugging very tightly to the vertebral bodies whereas this is in the actual retroperitoneal compartment alright so something going on with this right kidney here cystic mass of some sort and cystic mass is a good generic term to use because we don't know if it's benign or malignant without IV contrast we can't tell if there are soft tissue components within it so, a fairly large cystic mass of the right kidney would be a reasonable short description there. Okay, go down a little bit lower. This doesn't have as much anatomy as I had hoped, but what do we have here? We're coming up into the liver. Here's the liver. Here's the gallbladder, liver, gallbladder. Okay, so as we go higher, we see the spleen and the stomach. And why is the stomach wrapping over the aorta like this toward the midline and then across? Well, because it's got to go up into the chest as the esophagus. So here we are in the lower chest. So if you were to look at this image, you know this is the heart, I presume. This is the top of the liver. This is top of the spleen. That's typically what you see on this image. If you go down, here we go. Here's the esophagus again, back where we were. Here's the aorta. If we were to go down from there, you should expect the esophagus and aorta to go through to the abdomen. And indeed, they both do. So now take a look at this structure here. This is the, or these are the two crura of the diaphragm. This is the left cruce of the diaphragm. This is the right cruce of the diaphragm. And the plural of cruce is crura. So now if we were to go upward, you will see how these spread out laterally and then they become much more difficult to, to see but here you have the right cruise. Here you can see a little bit of the left cruise. And there's a defect there through which the esophagus passes. As you can imagine, you're below the diaphragm here and you, you're in the stomach. And here, well, here, you are. here you're below the diaphragm and you see stomach. And then you go upward and that's where you see thora distal thoracic esophagus. So now if you look at this process here, you can see how we're going, we're up, distal thoracic esophagus, and the thoracic aorta, and then it goes through this gap in the diaphragm, and this gap through which the aorta passes is the aortic hiatus. The aortic hiatus is the defect, the gap in the diaphragm through which the aorta passes. So you have aorta and esophagus. And you have the right cruise of the diaphragm, the left cruise. And if we go up a little bit higher, try to follow that right cruise. Let me go back down where you can see it. There you see it nicely. And as you go upward, since it is tightly hugging the contour, the dome of the liver, you're catching it more and more obliquely. So it becomes very hard to see. There's a little bit of it but you know that the whole, the whole liver 
the dome of the liver is covered with diaphragm. So this is some diaphragm here. And if we go down, you'll see how that becomes more clear as well. Okay. Okay, other structures here. Let's look at that aorta again. We follow it down, and this is harder now with the non-enhanced CT, but that's good for you to master because if you can see it here, it'll be much easier on IV contrast. Okay, so here we are going down, and what is this structure? What is this structure? That is the pancreas. How can we know it's the pancreas? Well, if you look over this way farther, you can see it kind of become prominent in the pancreatic head region, and it'll have a tubular viscous next to it, which is the second portion of the duodenum. Now, if we look over this way, which way will the, or toward what, will the tail of the pancreas be pointing? It always points to the spleen, except in this case. No, it does. It does. It curves here. It curves. You see how it does that? And it always points to the hilum of the spleen because the splenic vein is always immediately posterior to the pancreas. So wherever the, sp the splenic vein is going, the pancreas, distally, its tail, is heading in that same direction. So here we look here, and then this is an example of where you see a hodgepodge of stuff and you're not sure what to make of it. Well, this is the splenic hilum. So you know that you'll see a couple things here. You'll see a splenic artery, a splenic vein, and you'll see the tail of the pancreas. This is the tail of the pancreas. This has a little calcification, so I think that's going to be splenic artery. And here's something. You can't really see them very well. We'll see them on an enhanced image, but it just shows you that it's not what things look like. It's their anatomic relationships. That is the key concept in cross-sectional anatomy. You do know somewhat where things are, but they are variable. So here you have the spleen way posterior. Sometimes it's way lateral or more anterior. Sometimes it's just all the way up under the diaphragm, very cephalad in its position.